Calf TV back for another week. I've got a guest in the studio this week, Alex Bastiavansky, joined by Calf Director Phil Iannati. To, uh, we're doing some reminiscing actually off camera. We're going to do a bit of that today. But uh, welcome to the studio. Thanks. Good to be back. The man uh, may have pulled a hamstring this weekend. <laughs> he played at the uh, Robbie Tournament. Uh, it, w it was the uh, charity event hosted yes. by Dwayne De Rosario and Friends. Still in game shape, are you? No, not really. Not yeah, really. I'm happy. You're a little I'm still painful today. today. Yeah. yeah, but it was just it was a great event. Dwayne, Some big names. Yeah, you got uh, Paul Stalteri, you got Dwayne De Rosario, yeah. you got Craig Forrest, all Premiership players, yeah. you know that played high level. Jim Brennan, uh, Rick Titus was there. It was just great, great atmosphere. Good to be around those guys. I haven't seen some of them in a long time. Yeah. So uh, bringing those guys together was just an exciting time, and uh, hope to you know spend more time to them. And you know it was a great, great time. Uh, it's actually, we're going to have a lot of fun today because we're going to go over all of them. We figured, you know, last week was uh, um, Canada Day, so there were no games uh, throughout the league. So we're going to sort of reflect on through six, seven weeks now of play, uh, what's happened so far. And we've also got a fantastic guest. This is a, a big uh, big guest, Hannibal Najjar, who is the former uh, coach and technical director for the Trinidad and Tobago national team. Going to join us here in the studio. We're going to talk, well, about how him and Phil know each other going way back and also just maybe a little bit of analysis about, uh, you know, in light of Euro and some of the smaller countries, Iceland being first and foremost, but we talked Wales, we've talked Ireland, Northern Ireland, countries that are able to advance and stuff mm -hmm. and how, you know, what we can do is, uh, you know, Canada is a soccer, soccer country to advance to that next level. Anyway, lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, CAF, we're, uh, what, six weeks, seven weeks in now to the season of play and, uh, you happy with the way things are going so yeah, far? Yeah, it's been a great season. The feedback from our members are uh, is very positive. Um, you think some we have some new new academies that join us and part of the program, and um, you know, the super group for them is, is something uh, that they've never seen before. Where mm -hmm. the players are walking in the stadium, coming out, you know, you're there every week. You see it. They so, love it. Uh, yeah. The competition, you know, especially in the top. You know, four or five teams. Is, you know, some very tight games, and it's it's been great so far. You know, the young mm -hmm. ones. It's always good to see the young ones playing. You know, we're you know, two, three thousand people at uh, at our fields. And still sixteen, four, day. seven. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and you know what? Having you know, uh, obviously talking about Dwayne Dorsey, Dero United joining us. Uh, you know, uh, it was exciting when uh, his father, you know, Mr. Tony D. Uh, Dorsey, that everyone knows. You know, he's there every weekend watching the kids, mm -hmm. and, and it brings back memories. And he's loving it. And he says, "Phil, this is amazing. This is what it's all about. It's 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 all." Football football people when you come to the field, you know, right. guys that used to play together right. now uh, talking, you know, at one point I, I'm watching, a, a, I think, a U11 game and on my left side is doing the Rosario, yeah. on the right is Rick Titus and in the middle is Johnny Williams yeah. coaching. These, yeah. are, these are legends. These Absolutely. are guys that came from the game and to be all together at one facility, uh, inspiring, inspiring these young, you know, kids is just just a great it's atmosphere. An abs it's a total inspiration. Yeah. We are going to have Dwayne on in a couple of weeks uh, in the studio to talk more about his program. Um, you launched the 3v3 uh, girls, which you're really excited about. Talk about that. Yeah, this is a big demand for girls, right? So, um, you know, we launched it, you know, a few weeks back where we want to get the girls going. And, and I think talking to the members, the best way to do it was to, uh, you know, start small, you know, 3v3 and uh, get a lot of touches on the ball, you know, get some development. So we're starting with the youth. You know, we have uh, one division of U15 mm -hmm. girls, but, the, you know, the young ones, uh, we're starting this program to have progression over the next two, three years. Right. So we're excited at that. The parents love it. The young girls love it so it's uh, it's a success already and we're looking forward because we actually have um, the like a 3v3 cup coming up in August uh, August and last uh, year's was so much fun oh, yeah uh, you have yeah. 60 and a trip 70 to the teams. Disney tournament uh, yes. at the end of that yep Connected to the Disney tournament, so we have one the long weekend of August, another one the long weekend of September right. on the Monday. You know, if you want to check that out, it's on, I think, uh, likeacup.ca, mm -hmm. and you get all the information there. So it's exciting because the girls are getting involved, the boys are getting involved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, last year we had a, a girls team that went down to Disney and lost in the finals, which was, you know, was exciting for them. And mm -hmm. we're, we're really excited about the partnerships that we're doing with Disney and the Next Gen. Let's talk about Next Gen. We've got about a minute really and a half good. in this yeah. segment. Uh, Next Gen is something that, uh, that CAF has been really excited about. Um, we had uh, Brett Mosen in the studio last week to talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, the Next Gen, Gen Camp uh, just happened this past week in Oakville. Uh, talk about the association with Next Gen. Yeah, you know what? It's it's ongoing. So, you know, the first two camps that we had were uh, ID camps of bringing players uh, in to be identified, which we actually had players already go to Belgium. Uh, uh, that being identified yeah. are going to Argentina. You know, it's exciting for mm -hmm. our, our young our young kids that have that opportunity that are being seen by now international coaches. You know, this week's camp, you know, 
exciting. I was there uh, uh, early uh, Monday morning seeing it. You know, it's getting set up. People are, are, are embracing it. You know, over 40 plus kids there, and it's first time around. You know, it's it's great. You have Jeff Bookman, you know, who's a former Chelsea uh, director, coaching mm -hmm. development, and he's there. He's excited. He's pumped at what's happening in, in Canada and, and and just bringing North America Co together. Coaches from all over the world representing different styles as well, which yes. is very cool, isn't it? We're we're almost out of time, but yeah, the next gen camp uh, that you ran in April and May was a huge success. Over 200 kids that were there. Um, so anyway, lots more exciting stuff to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about more calf happening so far this year um, and get to our guests after that. More calf TV coming up in just a second. Welcome back to CAF TV. Alex Bastiavansky joined in the studio by CAF Director Phil Iannati. We're just doing a general uh, review of so far how the season has gone this year. Um, new academies. There's been there's quite a few this year. Obviously, with two new groups this year, two new super groups, yeah. uh, another 16 group and the open group. Uh, it's been very exciting, and I know you're excited about a lot of the new academies that are in this year. Yeah, of course. You know, you love to bring you know high-level teams and good coaches. You know, we're really excited that some of the teams that you see battling at the top. Obviously, Epic is always one of the top teams that mm -hmm. are battling out there to bring in now uh, a London group that uh, you know bring some quality players uh, and uh, future another uh, group out of Vaughan. This saga is one other group there. So every game now, and especially when you start getting the top five teams, are very close, and, mm -hmm. and that's what you want. You want that competition, and that's what the super group is about. How we, uh, you know, push the players to be, you know, getting better. It's mm -hmm. development at the end of the day, and that comes from high competition. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to build on in two, three years. And this is actually the second year of the super group. The competition keeps getting better and better, and that's what we're excited about, Alex. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think next year just going to get better. I'm yeah. really excited about you know what the you know the people are talking out there. How they want to be part of this, and you know, because it's it's a great program. Mm -hmm. It's a great program for developing players, and um, given that guidance of hey, can we work with professional teams or scholarship? That's the end goal, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, very happy with everything so far. Yeah, um, the open group, uh, which you were really excited about launching, a, um, obviously an adult group. Uh, uh, are you satisfied with the way things are going with that? The level of competition has been has been unreal so far. Atomic, unfortunately, the only team yet to secure a point. Otherwise, uh, I mean, even them, they've been in absolutely every game they've played so far. A lot of one-goal losses. Uh, overall, top to bottom, it's been very competitive so far. Exactly what we talked about at the beginning, the pyramid mm -hmm. of play. Now we have the base with the young kids that are playing at the one facility. Where you go, the super group, when you go there is to the you know open age, which is fantastic. Having Toronto Croatia there. What a success story, you know, obviously talking about what's coming on to them this coming year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but the games are tight. Yeah, Supernova keeping it close against Toronto Croatia. You got Brampton Epic City. Epic coming into their own Epic with a bunch of young well. kids coached you know, by Ricky Titus yeah, as well. And, and whenever you have Rick Titus on your side, you know, that's, you know, it's going to be a tough game. That man's always disciplined, fit, committed. Those are the kind of people that we want part of our organization yeah. that will eventually make our program stronger. Again, you know, it's the full pyramid, and now Epic has that whole pyramid All of play. All the way up to the top. Now, um, the under-14 group has been fascinating to watch. Of course, you expected Epic uh, to be up there at the top as they are, but they've actually, uh, they're on top because they played one more game than, I'll tell you, the ADP under-14s might be even more impressive so far. That team, uh, Sean Omrani's team, has been absolutely incredible so far. Yet to lose a game, yet to concede a single goal so far. You know what? Class act. That's all I can say. Uh, Sean is fantastic. He, he leads his group, um, you know, uh, fantastically throughout, you know, everything that he does from preparation to organization to even on the field, watching him sit back and I, I'm watching him as a coach. Um, Former high level know, player himself, he knows he what he's doing. He, yep. he comes from the game, but it just it's all the small details. Mm -hmm. Alex. It's, it's 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 encouragement of the players, and that's the success they're having. I watch them even participate in the Ontario Cup. Here's a team now that's gone through, beat some really tough competition. Absolutely, yeah. just lost in the finals of the Ontario, uh, sorry, of the Robbie tournament. Um, you know, so they're a team that you know that's given competition to a lot of our members, yeah. and now they're the, one of the teams to watch. Actually, yeah. you know, I think they'll be right there battling it out, and uh, you know. Great, great uh, success story for us this past year. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun as his son, the uh, tiny assassin, as I like to assassin, as I like to call him. <laughs> uh, Cheyenne Amrani has been just a, a lot of fun to watch this year. Um, w talk, going back for a second to uh, the open group, talking about Toronto, Croatia. Uh, very special coming up, and I've got the date written down here. It is August. Uh, I'll have to find it in just a second here. Uh, the uh, pardon me, uh, the 40th anniversary of uh, them winning the soccer bowl. 
Uh, it's the TFC Heritage Series. I believe it's August 28th uh, at BMO Field, and I'm going to correct myself on the, uh, 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 on the with the name key on the bottom if I'm wrong. But uh, so take a look for that. But the Heritage Series. Uh, that TFC is doing this year, honoring Metro's Croatia 1976 Soccer Bowl victory. Uh, it's going to be at BMO Field. It's going to be incredible. Listen, at the end of the day, uh, hats off to Toronto FC for respecting the history of the game in Canada. You know, this is culture. This is uh, Toronto Metro's Croatia who, who did something uh, that, you know, that not many people are able to do. You know, putting an organization together, going out and bringing players in like Eusebio. Uh, you know, and then you got uh, quality players that are from here, you know, Bob Arushi, yeah. Mark Antonio. So um, just, you know, just a great success story for them and look forward to that event and uh, TFC recognizing Metro Croatia for a, a championship that they brought to Canada. Mm -hmm. Really excited about that, you know, and all its members should be proud. I think it'll be a, a great day uh, for all our CAF members as well who will be coming out and supporting the event. It's another it, CAF it, day there basically. And of course we'll have, we've had course. two so far this year. Um, and I, I know we go back to it, but uh, it, it really is such a thrill for these kids when you see them there helping you out, being the flag bearers, the ball boys, all that stuff. They just have a blast, don't they? Yeah, it's a great great time for them and look forward to just continuing that partnership with Toronto FC as well. Yeah, so what else do you want to touch on before we get to the guests in the next segment then uh, regarding CAF? And, uh, and uh, I mean, I know there's uh, the, the Super, the, uh, the, the 4v4, uh, the Leica group, when is that actually happening? The, uh, the Leica 3v3 is happening 3v3, on, on, pardon on me, the yeah. long weekend of um, August, Monday. Uh, it's, I think, the, and the same thing goes in September long weekend. So those are two events that uh, we're pretty excited about. We were successful last year. We got to go to commercial. We're going to no talk about it a lot more in the coming days. More Cat TV coming up in just a moment. Welcome back to Cat TV. It's getting uh, more crowded here in the studio as I'm still joined by. Uh, by uh, Phil Iannotti, the CAF director, and a special guest. We've got Hannibal Najjar joining us in the studio, who's got, I can't even get into starting to list his resume, it's too long. We've got some really interesting things to talk about, though. Let's start off with, first of all, welcome to the studio. Thank you very and much. And joining us, we're looking forward to picking your mind here with your expertise. Uh, well. How do you two know each other, because you go way back? Well, um, I just got back from Europe. I was uh, there for, I guess, a year playing in Italy, and when I got back, um, a friend of mine asked me to come, I guess, for uh, trials with the You're how old, how, how old at this time? I was 16. 16? 16, turning 17, and uh, went out to Lamport Stadium, where always they, they host uh, On I the guess old turf. Yeah, it's the old oh. turf. So, uh, and the first time I met uh, Hannibal was there, and he was the coach for the, the Canada Games U20 U team. And, um, you know, the, the first time I met him, just it was a sense of energy, and uh, he told me exactly what I needed to do to make the squad, you know, you, you know, and from that moment on, we, we just, you know, inseparable. Uh, the, he ended up going after his coaching here in Ontario, became the you know, technical director and head coach of uh, Bellhaven, now University, uh, at that but point. Before we get into that, I want to know, what did you think of a young Phil Iannotti? <laughs> what was he like yeah. at 16 years old? He was, he was, uh, he had the message. He had what, what I needed, and that's what I said to him at the time. Called him in and um, clearly indicated to him that he had what I thought would be necessary. 16 for U20 team. Right. It means he's got it. You, yep. you like that. But he had to do a couple of things, and I addressed it to him, and he um, um, adjusted, yep. and he made the team. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so. you're, you're now based out of the States. You're living yep. in St. Louis. Um, before this, though, we should mention the, uh, one of the most fascinating things is uh, you were the technical director and head coach for the Trinidad and Tobago national team. That's in correct. In 2002 and 2003, you were one of the people who were instrumental in putting together the team uh, for the only time that Trinidad's ever qualified Monday for the World time. Cup. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I, I guess let's just generally talk about the experience and what that was like. Well, that, that, that really is um, uh, a memory of mine that uh, is very enjoyable, but at the same time, very sad because I, I had ambitions for it by being there myself longer than, than it was. Mm -hmm. The reasons for it uh, coming to an end, we leave that for another time. Right. But the beauty about it all is uh, that encouraged me to go back and undertake it with my family living in the States and me you know, moving back and forth, but really spending a lot of time down there was because I thought everything is possible within Trinidad because I know the, the, the ability. I was born and raised there, I played right. there. In the 80s, I was part of a, 
a phenomenal group of young players that made it to uh, make that team eventually. The Dwight Yorks Dwight and, York and, yeah. and the Hislops and you, you go on and talk, you, people who went off to England and, and you know, you have four years with them. You can see what you could develop from young, which is something that I think Canada needs to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that. We will get that yeah. But what, what I really was happy about was as small as Trinidad was, I heard you talking earlier about the smaller countries. That is what I thought could make the difference. You have access to everybody as much as you want, little interference in terms of distances can, and so accessibility. So you can almost be a benefit sometimes An to absolute have benefit. Smaller, yeah, you have yeah. them as much. One of the problems here, when I was here, was they asked you questions, what, what do we do with the kids out in BC, mm -hmm. in Nova Scotia, in mm -hmm. Quebec, in this, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a, a, a real problem. Right. So now you have to have a team with you on board doing some of the things. Right. To make that, so small is, is big, right. little is much. Mm -hmm. Um, in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and that's that's uh, one of the most interesting thing, things that I was sure about that I would achieve, it, it came to life. And we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff when it comes to the smaller countries and what they can do, and, and very interesting run, obviously, by Iceland, who was, I think, everyone's second team. If it wasn't their first team uh, at the tournament, they were the ultimate underdogs. Uh, what are you doing back in Canada now? Are you actually working in Canada right now for your video? Are you just back visiting right now? Uh, a couple of things. I am here on a social. I have a wedding I was attending, but at the same time, I have two young men, mm -hmm. Canadians with uh, West Indian roots from Trinidad, but born and raised here, um, that I am individually coaching. One I just sent, had to go back to Trinidad. He made the under 20 national team for Trinidad from Durham. And the other boy was from Durham too, but he is now in Slovenia. So it's a personal self-development um, aspect that my coaching has taken to right now where I do individual online um, coaching where we meet from time to time, face to face, mm -hmm. but we also go through the the rigors of me giving them assignments and the de de developing um, a sense of, of, of commitment to do what we give them. So right. you have to have a, a buy-in in the beginning. Right. Um, we've only got about 40 seconds left, but you're trying to get him on board with CAF uh, to play a bigger role. Well, that, that's, you know, the thing that he doesn't know yet. Uh, it's always been part <laughs> of, you know, the master plan, you know. Um, uh, when you have mentors in your life, and that's what you know, Hannibal is to me, um, that's what we want to build in CAF. We talked about many times about having mentorship for these young players. You know, who better than you know Hannibal to come on board? You know, you ask Rick Titus about Hannibal, he'll tell you exactly what he, he coached feels. Ricky Titus as Rick well. Titus, yeah. Dwayne De Rosario, this man coached all the top players. So you know, Dwayne York. Hold it. Yeah, we got the break. We're <laughs> definitely going to get back to the list of players at one time. More right. CAF TV coming up in just a moment. Welcome back to CAF TV, joined in the studio still by Phil Iannati, the uh, director of CAF, and uh, Hannibal Najjar, um, a coach, well, he's coached in the States, he's coached uh, extensively in Canada, and he was also the head coach of the Trinidad and Tobago national team. Uh, but one time he was Phil Iannati's coach, back here when you were 16 years old and older through university, and there's a pretty good list of names of guys that he also coached, and you were mentioning it just before he went to break, give yeah. us a few more. Before you cut me off. Before I cut oh, him yeah, off, yeah, so yeah. rudely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> commercial time, yeah, gotta so do no, it. Yeah. You know, Hannibal had, had Dwayne DeRosario when he was 14 years old, had uh, Rick Titus as well, brought Rick into the, the Trinidad national team, actually. So uh, we actually saw Rick, you know, this past week. At and, the Robbie, yeah. And you just, when you, when you see two people come together with that kind of passion, you know, uh, you, and words came and express the relationship and connection, and that's what Hannibal brings. You know, he brought that to everywhere from the Canada Games team to you know to the university to the Jackson Charge USS yep. USISL when we played in the states. Every player respected them, loved them, and they found a reason to fight for him, and that's so important. And that's what we keep talking about coaching. That's what this man brings, and I I hope you no, know, and I'll say it right here. I hope to bring him you know into CAF you know in the future and be part of what we're doing because. Uh, when we talk about development and uh, you know player development, coaching development, you know there's there's in my mind you know not too many people that can do what he can do mm -hmm. and, and and deliver the message and motivate people and and every in every sense of the game and life and spiritual and everything that you do. So we're very excited to have him here with us and look forward to hopefully a bright future. I know he's chomping at the bit. We've got less than four minutes left to talk about Euro because we wanted <laughs> yes. to talk about the smaller countries in Euro and. And uh, you know parallels maybe with with Trinidad being a smaller country and being able to qualify yes. for the World Cup. And but I mean obviously you look at Iceland, you look at Wales. 
uh, Northern Ireland, Ireland, even, you know, my Hungarians as well, uh, doing well to make it to the second round. My dad was through the roof about that. But uh, these, these smaller countries doing well, what, you know, what, what as Canadians, a country of 35 million people now, this vast land, uh, but we've, we've got the resources in place to do it. What are we doing wrong that these smaller countries can, can, pull, can uh, have these kind of results, but we don't seem to have them? Um, size is a problem. Because if you're looking to incorporate everybody from across the land, which you want to do, from coast to coast, top to bottom, uh, to see what you really have. What I had easy for me when I went back to Trinidad, no hesitation, was it's 60 miles uh, from top to bottom, 40 miles left to right. We have 2,000 square miles between Trinidad and Tobago. Dwight York came from Tobago. He is Dwight York that went from you know, spent four years with me. What made that possible? for him to be what he has become and pushes me as a coach to be better because of the abilities I see within the player is to go back home as a teacher and study how do I get this person mm -hmm. to be the best student that he could be. It gives me homework. It's not only him doing what I say, but I go in back to assess what needs to be done to be able to get the best of. And mm -hmm. that's what good coaches do. Right. What it is Iceland has done and what it is anybody who has done well for countries that are small and seemingly have a pool. I mean, the US has a pool of 40 million soccer players. A pool. The U Canada is 35 million in total population. A million registered players, I believe, right now as well, right. yeah. Trinidad, you push it down, you push Iceland, 350,000 roughly or less. What is their pool? So how it is you can get that? That is the spirit of the coach transferring itself in the player and the younger ones, through the parents, they would be buying that when they go back home, you have a partner in the parents. And that's what Canada has to do on, in the provinces. And the head coach of, Trinidad, uh, of, the, of Canada needs to understand it is important that we tap in on everybody mm -hmm. and uh, do something to the effect that that commitment that you get from the person in each province webs out to get as much as they could eventually to get... be all-encompassing, yeah. And then we collectively, those coaches with the head coach, come in and we talk about it. And then we have um, training um, where you could do further assessment to get it down to a, six, a 60. I believe in the 60 and then you bring it down as you get closer to what you're yeah. training for. Less than a minute. Do you want to chime in? You know what? Uh, it's been many years over the past, I guess, since we were young that they had a system in place from the provincial program to the national. It's changed a little bit right now and, um, you know, we talk about uh, a country like uh, you know, Iceland, 300,000 people, what did they do, you know, and I think it's understanding one philosophy it comes from the top to the bottom. Does everyone understand the same philosophy from the leadership? And that comes from the top, like Coach mentioned, uh, from the national coach right down to the provinces. Everyone following that same philosophy so you can have each player uh, understanding what they need to do to prepare themselves for that, you know, that team. Yep. And that's critical. I think that's what happened with Iceland. You yep. have a coach who tells everyone around, this is what we're playing and everyone followed it. You know, that's the system. Hopefully over time we can build in that connection. And that's what we're all working towards. And we can talk about this all day and we shall <laughs> <laughs> after we get off, but we're all out of time. Thanks so much for being here. And thank you yeah, for joining us in the studio. No, we really appreciate yeah. it, guys. It's a pleasure to be back home in, in many ways. Yep. And um, yes, there is a bright future and that needs to be harnessed through what Phil is trying to get done. Well, guys, thanks for joining me. Thank thanks you. Lots. Okay. And uh, we're done for this week. More CAF TV coming up next week. Enjoy the games this weekend, folks. Take care.